Welcome back, folks, to a brand new video. Venice. The floating city, the city of water, or the city of canals. Venice is known by many names. The picturesque gondola rides through the Venice waterways or the towering St. Mark's Basilica. There's always that desire to see the city at least once in your lifetime. So if you've never been before, let's take a look at 10 beautiful places to visit in Venice. Number 1. St. Mark's Basilica Now this is the first place that I reckon that you should head to, and by far the most epic church in Venice. The Roman Catholic Cathedral is set in the heart of San Marco Square, or Piazza San Marco, and it's been an important meeting place for Venetians and for us tourists throughout time. Even Napoleon once referred to St. Mark's Square as the drawing room of Europe, and most likely because of its wonderful tranquility as you sit and observe your surroundings. The architecture is impressive, and the marble staircase is filled with incredible detail. You'll notice the horses of St. Mark that crown the main entranceway, stolen by Napoleon but returned in 1815. So this is a great place to start your adventure in Venice. Number 2. Campanile di San Marco With its pointed roof and its brick structure, a 10th century campanile is so tall that it was the main mark for boat captains to find their way home. Now this is easily seen even from when you land in Venice, especially as you head to St. Mark's Basilica. It was rebuilt after crumbling in the 1500s, and it now has an elevator to take you all up to the top. This is the most popular bell tower in Venice, so it's better to visit it early during the day though it can be quite a sight at sunset as well. It offers superb views of the city, and if the weather is clear, you can see the Alps in the distance. Number 3. Palazzo Ducale Now one of the famous places to see in Venice, the Doge's Palace, is an immensely beautiful and gorgeous palace that's located on the bank of the Grand Canal. During the early days it was the seat of the government, the Palace of Justice and the official residence of Doge. Now you will notice the absolute finesse of the Venetian Gothic architecture, the decor, just sets it a class apart, and easily one of the best places to visit in Venice. So this is a great opportunity to get there early, roughly around 14 euros, and then you come to the Bridge of Sighs, which was built in the 17th century. So the purpose of this bridge was to connect the existing palace with the new prison to be built on the other side of the canal. And the name refers to the size that the convicts had who were on their way from the courtroom of the Palazzo Ducale and as they watched their freedom literally disappear under their feet from the bridge for the last time. Number 4. Grand Canal now Venice has literally hundreds of canals that connect the various islands that make up the city, and the largest of which is the Canal Grande. A monumental canal that's more like a river, as it passes from one side of Venice to the other, and snakes through the centre in a large S-bend shape. Over 170 buildings dating from as early as the 13th century line the banks of the canal. 
and is a very important waterway in the city for hundreds of years. And only four bridges span the Grand Canal. So as generally people and you know tourists alike travel along the canal, not over it. Number five, San Giorgio Maggiore. So this is one of the most photographed basilicas in Venice. And from Marx's Square, you can see this wonderful small island with the church and the bell tower. So the bonus of visiting this small island is that it's less busy than the ever popular St. Mark's Square. So you can visit yourself with public transport, but I recommend that you download the official app ACTV or AVM Venezia. And you can find the exact timetables of the water buses, the Pareto, and the best route from your hotel. Number 6. Campo Santa Maria Formosa Now this is one of the largest squares in Venice and it's located in the Castello district. The square is bound by three canals Santa Maria Formosa, Pestrin and Mondo Novo. But the most important building in the square is the Church of Santa Maria. And so, according to tradition, the church was built in 639 and then renovated just over 200 years later. And after that, it was damaged by a fire, restored again in 1106. The church was then rebuilt in 1492, in more of a Renaissance style. So there are so many important facts and interesting stories in regards to this area, so make sure that you spend some time there. Number seven, the Rialto Bridge. So it's one of Venice's most famous landmarks, a stunning arch bridge that spans the Grand Canal. It's not just a beautiful sight, but also a bustling marketplace where you can shop for souvenirs and enjoy the vibrant atmosphere of the city. But I would be lying if I said to enjoy the vibrant atmosphere of the city because it is packed like a can of sardines. But don't forget your camera for those picturesque views of Venice's iconic waterways. So it is super crowded. In the summer, it is chocker block, jam packed with so many people rubbing shoulders with strangers. Then this is the perfect attraction for you to visit during the baking summer. Next up is Burano. Now this is an island in the north of Venice, very near to Torcello. And it's become one of the most visited islands for its colorful houses. And every so often, and it's compulsory, the neighbors paint the facades of their homes in the chosen color. And are notified of the specific shade according to where the residents located. But a legend is told that the houses were painted bright and cheerful colours so that sailors could see them on those gloomy and foggy days. But believe what you will. You only need around one or two hours to visit this island, since it's very small. But if you want to keep exploring the Venetian lagoon and its islands, I highly suggest taking a Vaporetto to Torcello once you have visited the island of Burano. Number 9. Murano. So now we come to the second island that you should visit to kind of get away from the main areas of Venice. And Murano is the second largest island in the Venetian Lagoon. And is world renowned for its glassware. So it attracts millions upon millions of people every year to admire its glass making that has been going on for centuries. So it's a mix of seven islands linked by bridges and separated by eight canals. 
And as I mentioned, famous for its glass making, its glass products, mirrors, and so forth. So if you've ever wanted to buy me a gift on your next holiday to Venice, then this island is the perfect place to head to. And finally, number 10, a gondola ride. Now, if there's one thing that you should save your money for, it's this. Enjoying a gondola ride in Venice, I would say is an absolute must. Drifting along the canals of a very romantic city. is something that you should try at least once in your lifetime. As your gondolier navigates the waterways, you'll be surrounded by wonderful architecture and the gentle sounds of the water against the ancient buildings. For me, it's, it's, it's the perfect way to savour the city's unique charm. So whether you're with someone or by yourself, the ambience, that's truly why you would go on one of these, is truly unforgettable. You see, Venice's picturesque canals come to life in a way that only a gondola ride can offer. And there you have it folks, those were 10 top things to do in Venice. By the way, you can go to the Peggy Guggenheim collection if that's your thing. There is a museum there of modern art, so if you are interested in that, you can do that too. That's it from me. As always, be good, be kind, and be careful because I have got to go to the Far East.